Hello everyone. In our last video, we set up a closure script environment for our to-do app. In this video, we are going to add closure back into it so that we can create a to-do API. Uh, soon we will also add a database. We will also figure out uh, how to set up integrant routers using Reitit. We'll add some extra functionality to our uh, shadow CLJS closure script as well. But for the time being, let's start simple. In the last video, I used Doom Emacs, but this time I'm going to use VS Code. VS Code has an interesting, uh, a very nice extension called as Calva. It is uh, inspired by Cider from Emacs, and it also received a nice funding from Closures together. And I really think Calva is the easiest way to get started with Closure or Closure Script. So I've opened my VS Code over here. Now we can see the structure that uh, we have this code or CLJS file, which is our entry to Closure script and we have a user.clj file. So the user file gets loaded into our namespace automatically whenever we run a closure REPL. But before we get started with all of this, first we need to create a depths.edn file. So let's create a new file. Let's add depths.edn and let's give it a path, paths of source. So what this does is it adds the source folder, which is this folder, into our class path. Since we want to add a closure backend, we need a web server. For a web server, we are going to use a Jetty, which is a very popular Java server. And to interface with Jetty, we have a kind of abstraction known as Ring. Ring is a very popular library and let's figure out how we'll go about adding this Ring to our local project. So as you can see, this is our Ring repository on GitHub. And if you, uh, you should definitely go through all of this. But if you see here, there's no way to install it, right? It's just to include one of these above libraries, add this to your dependencies. The problem is this is assuming that we are using Linegin. But uh, we are not going to be using Linegin. We are going to be using the CLI tools.depths, uh, which is the closure CLI by the official team. So let's figure out how to add this. So the first thing we should always do is open up Clojars. Clojars is a public free, free repository. Uh, to distribute all the closure related jars. So let's open up closures and search for ring. And you can see there are uh, several different packages for ring. But we are going to select the uh, parent one, which is only ring. And here you can see there is a way to include this in your closure CLI project. So we are going to copy this, go back to our VS code and create a key called as depths. And this is a map and inside the map we will include ring. Okay, now we'll save this file and we'll open up our terminal. So let's hit in CLJ, which uh, leaves us in the REPL. If you are running this for the first time, you'll see a bunch of lines which will show you that uh, they are downloading ring from the closures or the Maven repository. So your CLJ file is automatically going to read this depths.eden file from your project root directory. So once this is done, we actually need to verify if ring has actually been installed. So let's go back to our uh, ring GitHub uh, repository and let's see if they have any documentation about it. So they have this wiki and inside wiki there is getting started. So you should go and read this, but again, this is with line again and we are not using line again, but still it should be very easy to figure out what they're trying to do. So they are using ring.adapter.jetty and they are calling a run jetty function which presumably uh, exists in this namespace. So let's do this uh, in a little better way. So let's go back to our REPL and type require and ring.adapter.jetty as j. What this is that this this will do is this is going to load this file and into our namespace. Once we are done with this, let's do j slash run jetty and let's check what they've supplied to them so they've supplied a handler function and they've supplied some options so the handler function takes in a request and it returns a simple map which is nothing but the response so this is very uh closure like that it's taking a map and returning a map there is no magic happening here so let's do this let's uh, pass in a function so let's first create a function over here let's create def handler takes a request and all it does is 
prints the request back and it returns let's say a status 200 okay let's also return a body with some text hello so we have this handler function and now let's run our jetty let's see if this actually works so we do run jetty we add in handler and let's specify a port uh, 8000 we do that and it says that it's running on port 8000 let's go and check if it actually is and we refresh it and bam we've got our hello here So this shows that our jetty is jetty is running in our closure from our closure application let's now instead of doing this on the repel let's put it in a file so what we want to do is we want to create another file in our source simple to do namespace but since we have core.cljs already let's name it something else let's name it uh, backend.clj once we have this file let's change the namespace which is simple to do dot backend uh, let's also require this jetty uh, namespace which is wire tsj so we have this and let's create this handler function as well handler takes a request and it is to it and it returns hello as you can see something was printed this is basically the request which got printed this request has all kinds of detail like remote address headers uh, it's going to have a URI uh, it's going to have query string if anything was there the body uh, it's going to have all sorts of details you can probably read more in the wiki or you can just explore this so we have a handler function and in this so that we know it's and let's create a server function let's create a def let's create a server variable definition and let it be simply j jetty handler and with an 8000 now as you can see here our rep this is inside the terminal right so our repel is blocked and i cannot type anything anymore uh, in the closure repel what you want to do is we want to run jetty in a background function we are going to add this option which is join this is available in the wiki as well which is join false so it won't uh, it's going to run in the background we've got this we've got this and we've got this so let's save this file let's exit from our repel and run let's run clj once more Let's try to require simple backend else. And this worked. So let's check uh, what our server holds. V slash server. Okay, it's a function. Okay, so here you can see that just jetty server is in the started state we can do some kind of magic here so we can do stop v slash server and it's going to stop it uh, and stuff like that so let's try once more let's go back uh, and here it is hello world so it's running the new handler function now say i want to change something here so let's say i change it to hello world one two three i save this file and now what how am i how is jetty going to pick up on these changes so there are multiple ways to go about solving this so as you can see it did not pick up there are multiple ways to solve this one of them uh, is jetty provides something called as a, a middleware called as a wrap reload which is going to figure out if there are any changes in the file namespaces which it depends on and it's going to reload itself but uh, we are not going to be using that what we instead want to learn is repel driven development how we can hook into our running session and change stuff so for that we are going to take some help from Calva. So let's exit out of our CLJ and 
let's uh, go to the command palette of VS Code. Since I have Calva installed as an extension, it it's going to give me an option for Calva Jack in. It's going to start a project, repel and connect. So let's do that. Uh, it's going to give me an, a bunch of options. We are going to select only closure CLI. And as you can see, it's going to launch something in the terminal here below. Once it's done that, uh, this jacken is going to change and this becomes our REPL window. So we can interact to this below REPL through this window editor. And this editor is interacting with this below REPL via network connection. And this is the reason why we call this as end REPL. It's not only a REPL, it's an end REPL, which is a network REPL. So now that we have our REPL connected, let's uh, try to see if this actually works. So let's just try plus one, two, and instead of hitting enter, we are going to hit control enter. We do a control enter and here it is three. So let's, uh, let's see if this REPL knows about our namespaces. So again, let's do a require and let's see, try simple. Okay, and here you can see it's already picked up on our backend. So simple to do dot backend. This is a nice auto completion feature. Uh, provided by Calva. So we do simple to do dot backend, give it name as J. So we should have given it as B, but and we do a J slash server. Just check there is something running. And it is. So let's go back to our app, which is still running. And Let's stop this. Let's stop a slash server and refresh. And as you can see, it's still loading on the top. It means yep, something is not working. Perfect. So let's check something interesting. What say we want to change this handler function? Right? We want to introduce something else. Let's say we want to add a wow. We do that. We save this and let's say we start our server. Let's do a start server. And we go back, we reload our page. And as you can see, it's not here there. It's not here. So what we have to do is we have to close our REPL and we have to reload our REPL and we have to run this server again. So instead of doing that, what we can do is instead of passing in handler, we are going to pass a reference to this handler, which can be done using var handler. So you see all of these things, right? These are references. So let's pass the reference to this function. Let's save it and let's reload our REPL. So to reload our REPL, I'm simply going to go down here and I'm going to delete this, which closed our, uh, the connection was closed. And I'm going to go and do a jack in once more. So I do this, I'm going to load up again. And let's require this file. So we require and go back. It says wow. But now if I want to change it, so I say wow factor. I save it. I come back, refresh. It does not show. But what if I press Alt Enter? What this does is it's going to evaluate this entire form. And as you can see, it re-evaluated this function. Once it does that, and we refresh this, you can see we have it available. But this won't work if we don't pass in the var of handler. So this is kind of the REPL driven development. And now we can make a change anywhere and uh, evaluate that form and it's going to get picked up. So now you must be wondering how do I explore all this on my own? So I'm going to show you a trick, uh, something like a REPL driven debugging you could say. I'm going to come into this handler function and I'm going to add a global definition for request. So what we are basically doing is whenever uh, this handler function is called, we'll populate a global variable called as request with the request map. Let's save this. Let's alt enter to reevaluate the handler function and let's go back to our localhost 8000 and do a refresh. So we've done this refresh. It means that the request has been populated. And now we can check what the request is. In the REPL, we simply type a request and then you can see interact, uh, play around with the entire request over here. 
this is extremely helpful to figure out what to do uh, when you're stuck somewhere or you just want to explore what things are being passed around this is kind of the beauty of closure and the repel driven development uh, which you can hook into so let's play around with that so we know that this is our root handler like a jet like nothing else is being passed to here but what if we have multiple routes right we just don't want to return this we want to build something uh, different for different urls so let's try to see how we'll uh, make a very simple routing mechanism so let's go uh, go to our request and let's explore a little bit so let's see do we have some okay so we have something called as the uri which says that the uri is slash so let's try and go to a different URI. What if I do a slash API slash wow and go back to our REPL, uh, type our request again over here and you can see that the URI slash API slash wow. Uh, this is perfect for us. Let's also see what query string can do. Maybe query string is something related to get requests. Uh, what if I do a slash hello equals one, two, three. We come back and we check the request again and yes query string is giving us the get request in the query perfect so let's create a simple way to route functions to uh, route our request to different functions so let's write a case request which takes our uh, uri on which it's going to match so let's our i from the request and let's match it against dash API dash check and okay let's not use check let's just dash API and let's return a function called as API handler API we pass it there. and let's do one more URL let's do uh, wow URL and let's do it wow handler function need this anymore this. need the request as well but we do need these two handlers let's create them i'll do it. yeah handler it takes a request again you know we can do a status 200 api copy this the wow handler as well and let's evaluate this alt enter let's evaluate this alt enter and let's re-evaluate our handler we, uh, we haven't even saved the file because everything is getting evaluated in the REPL to figure out how case works uh, you can always go to closuredocs.org and search for case uh, i really like closuredocs.org as there are a lot of examples available so go check it out our file uh, server and as you can see local host 8000 is not returning anything because we don't have a condition for it. but if we do a local local host 8000 slash api we get the api handler if uh, we do a wow we get the wow handler so let's add a default way to do this as well go to back to our backend let's add a default which is going to be status 404 perfect reval go back let's see perfect we are getting a not found so this is kind of a mini router uh, which we've created in the next video we are going to be uh, taking a look at Reitit which is a full-fledged full -fledged router and we might also look a little bit into uh, creating some actual API related to to-do lists. Uh, thank you so much. Hope this was helpful.